No pressure, but this is a $30,000 event, and you do not want to mess up this attack. It is going to be a Skelly Donut. No pressure, though, right? They've handled much bigger pressure. They're, they can handle this. Their boss is over here. But, ooh, ooh. Okay, Klaus. Welcome to round four of the group stages of our $30,000 World Championship warm-up. We can see the current standings of all the teams on the screen right now, but today we are going back into group four. We're going back over to Na'Vi, and today they face off against the team that was able to defeat them in round three. All the teams in these group stages will play off against each other twice. And that means there's six rounds total of the group stages. And then the top two from each group will advance into the playoffs. And this base right here, this base right here is the same base that MO Shifters used against Navi yesterday that was able to stop Klaus. This was the one that cost them the war. So right out of the gate here, Pete Castro is going to try to handle it. And he's going to see if he can handle it better. But this time... Last time we saw the uh, super, we saw the defensive CC, the ice golems went over to where the king is standing right now, and they stopped the king from clearing that area. This time, the defensive clan castle troops are better handled, and he gets them with the main force, and he does have the healing tome to get them topped off there while they're taking the damage. Another heal spell past that to top them back off there to make their way to the town hall. The king was able to go not only through the top area of the base there, but continues on a little bit further, and we'll keep on going to the multi inferno. If he gets the multi, that'd be huge right there, but the war champion. Is still on. No, just kidding. She's deployed over from the, from the far right side of the base. The race tower is active, but he's got skeleton spells in the area there to save with the defenses. He almost got the defensive world champion down, but he keeps on moving here. And remember, a lot of the perfect or other wars here have been going to double perfect, so we need to be very, very, very conscious of time. But look at that Phoenix up top there. Cleared out where the king left off there. It finishes off that compartment. RC pops her ability, ha spawns the hog puppet, and he's got three swag freezes. That's how you get the revenge on that base there. Castro gets it done for the first triple for Navi. We also have another seven wars that are all going at the same time as this, and so we will be tracking all of them as we make our way through today. So we can see the results from the last time they faced off right here, and we can see the miss that Klaus ended with if you saw yesterday's video. But look at this here. This is what happened with Klaus. You can see it was the exact same base. Klaus used the exact same attack against it. But he had the group at the very top of the base here engage the defensive king and go into the eagle artillery area. But he got locked down by the defensive ice golems. This time, he put the king up there and he was able to handle that area while the ice golems went to the core of the base. So a very, very big difference in the outcome. But let's get into our next attack here. Let's see. Return fire. It is going to be a med. Start us off with some electro dragons and anti two star base. And I think that the time there for Picasso was roughly 1 minute and 40 seconds. So we'll be checking out the times there throughout the war and see how they end up uh, shaping up against each other here. But remember, $30,000 on the line. Everybody's on an even playing field here. So just the fastest attacks in a double perfect war end up being the tiebreaker. But if anybody misses, that can have a big, big impact on the war. And we have had wars that have had not perfect so like it doesn't guarantee that just going fast gets you the win you got to make sure that you get all triples across the board this one does get the blimp to reach the town hall e drags moving very very smooth he's got one e drag still down south there skeleton spell protecting it but it still gets targeted right there by the scatter shot he's gonna miss that single he's gonna miss the scatter shot that's a problem here he's gonna have to put the more champion into it warden still hanging out in the middle of the base there he's got the phoenix the phoenix is gonna be able to protect him if he does get shot down, but he stays alive for now. Queen pops her ability there. She's got the healer puppet. She'll keep on moving for a little bit longer. Here comes clan castle troops. This is going to slow him down a bit here. These clan castle troops are going to be ignored. Be ignored. It's not going to slow him down. Hog puppet spawns off of the world champion, and he leaves the walls and is able to take the final building down. Let's check the times here because I think that puts MO shifters into the lead, and yeah. Yeah, it does by a very, very significant margin right out of the gate. One minute and 15 seconds on that attack. Looking across the board here, it is all triples everywhere, except for, unfortunately, for Alexi. They've been struggling this weekend. They've been struggling. They've had a lot of misses. They haven't taken any wins, and they are down against Stalwart Esports out of the gate. But let's get into Gaku. Gaku going in with the Root Riders, the Valkyries, and the Super Barbarians. We know this attack is strong. They are using it a lot, and we will see how far he can push into the core of the base here. But we see that the Town Hall area 
the way that the void spaces are shaped around it, the way that the defenses are arranged, he does kind of naturally have a funnel that drives him into the middle of the base, and then he can get there and then spread out after he arrives. But he will be anchored down by the Clan Castle troops here, and it is a damage CC, which could be a little bit dangerous against a... Okay, uh, a Lalo here, but he gets a Root Rider attack here with a uh, properly placed poison. That is not going to be a problem. He's going to plow right through that. That'll keep the speed up very, very quickly here, and it won't be any issue whatsoever. But he does need a little bit more force over the right side. Maybe he needs a freeze over there to get the Root Riders that are kind of clumped up there without, or not clumped up there, all the Root Riders over to the left there. He's got lighter troops over to the right that are powering through walls right now. The Pekkas really are all this there. The World Champion gets the assist right there, and he does have one Root Rider on the Multi Inferno up top. I think overall looking very good here. Skeletal Spell on the back side here. RC pops her Haze File. Surges her way forward. Hog Puppet and Haze File getting a lot of value right here. He's got the Warden that was one of the Healing Tome as he goes through the Town Hall. Clearly Frozen Arrow. King with Giant Gauntlet. A triple in 1 minute and 21 seconds here for Gaku. And that will give him a chance to level the playing field if they can get a defense at a slower time. El Hades sticking with what is tried and true. It is Root Riders, Valkyries, and Super Barbarians once again. Lots of Skeleton Spells on this one. But I think the mark to beat here is going to be right around 1 minute 45, right in the ballpark. I don't know the exact numbers here. We'll compare after the attack and see where we sit, assuming that he triples. But we've got a bunch of Root Riders going right into the defensive ice golems and the Rocket Blues taking some Eagle Artillery strikes. But we'll get the Eagle Artillery down at the very beginning of the attack here. That's his priority over to the right side. And then everybody else will just charge forward into the core. The Skeletal Spells disable the Seagull Inferno. Good setup right there. More Skeletal Spells over the other side of the base there. Onto the Monolith. Freeze that up there. Town Hall is not activated yet. That is one of the advantage of using the Siege Barracks rather than the Log Launcher. I do like the Log Launcher when I do this attack here. But I definitely understand the merits of the Siege Barracks when we get the Double P.E.K.K.A. To be able to make sure that we get the strong flanks and all the extra wizards for speed. But on top of that, we don't activate the Town Hall as we make our way forward. But oh... What is going on with the monolith here? The monolith is completely hold of the line. It's shutting him down right there. His core group is wiped out. This is in trouble. This is in real, real trouble right here. Klaus, can we get the defense here? Where's the world champion? Is world champion gone? World champion is gone? World champion is gone. The queen's the only thing alive right now. She steps her way forward here. Super Barbs, this is a defense. Klaus, he lost the war in the previous one with a miss, but today he makes up for it more than so with a defense at 91%. Dude, double poison tower completely shut those root riders down. Just slowed their attack speed down. Add in some ice golems on top of that. That's how you get the hold here. That's how you stop the root riders, baby. But on top of that, single infernos. Single infernos, poison towers. And ice golems with an anti two star base, and it gets the hold there. They're gonna think they're gonna think twice about breaking that out again. But now the question is, can Navi hold on for three more attacks without making a mistake? Because we know that that is possible. We know that Navi is not flawless. They do make mistakes. They do have misses. And I guess we'll just have to see if any of them land in this war right here. But Kazuma's in. Over the Rubidas, going with the Valkyries, going with the Super Barbarians. He probably would have had a chance to change his plan here. Now, for the last couple of attackers, they will have the option to be able to swap out to different strategies and maybe try something that isn't going to be so rushed and spammy and potentially out of control. And that's what we like to see there. That's what we want to see, especially out of a team like Navi, who is, is known for their creativity and can think outside of the box. And if they aren't forced into spam by the spam meta to try to go fast no matter what then they will not be kind of pigeonholed into attacks that they may not actually want to do on every single attack you know just because of the speed that it is capable of but kazuma making his way across the town hall now he gets him down with the monolith there has a skeleton spell locking it out though but looks like he's got the queen and the titan into the monolith able to get it down queen still has her ability can freeze up that Town Hall if he chooses to. He's got the Skeleton Spell for the backside of the base there. Headhunters for the Defensive King. Super Barbarian Swarming. Plenty of extra support here. Looks like he's got it 100% under control. Kazuma will get it done. Hog Pup is seeking Shield. Healing Tome. And then Frozen Arrow on that Queen. And Giant Gauntlet on the King. Easy day there. 
Kazuma locks it in. From this point out, ammo shifters cannot afford any more mistakes. Not against Navi. There's no room for error. Hanzo is in. He's going to go to Zap and Lalo. Zapping out the multi inferno, the rage tower, and picking up an archer tower as well. But most importantly, he gets down the eagle artillery. Lots of investment right there. A heavy, heavy amount of lightning, which will make the next phase a little bit more difficult. But looks like he's going to dive the heroes in to go secure the tunnel takedown. He does not take advantage of the king under Phoenix there to be able to go all the way into the scatter shot. The king could have got there. I mean, I guess the walls over there got open for the splash damage afterwards. But he circles around. He's not going to have enough punch to get the scatter shot down unless the uh, Phoenix can take it. But at least the queen was able to get the distraction with the king there. She runs the healer puppet and the invisibility vial. Gets the town hall down. Not an issue there. He will go ahead and take advantage of the Phoenix. Have already worked through that area and put the slammer in right there. And then look at the rest of the CC down. We see a witch on defense. We see a witch inside of the poison here. A headers right there. Witch is chilling. Witch is in the poison. And the witch go down. I think he's gonna go down. He's good, he's good. All right, which is gone. Defensive clan castle troops are dealt with, but there are more troops inside. We did not see a full deployment of the clan castle. And so there are troops inside that the world champion needs to be aware of because she's probably gonna end up pulling something else out of there. It might be rocket balloons, it might be ice golems at this point. The world champion is staying wide of the base there, stuck on ground skellies for now. Got the balloons making their way down through these multi infernos. First one goes down, frees up the second one. He's, got, he's out of spells now. And he's got the punch into it right now. Stuck in the tomato trap. But the trap's going off right there. But the multi inferno still could hold the line. If it softens up the group here, the king stops the world champion. The balloons could end up dying out right here. It's not over till it's over. But he's got a Yeti over the backside there. Taking out the air defense. The world champion pops the hog puppet. That gets her through haste file. And hog puppet surge through. Get past that defensive king. Overpower him. And get the defenses down. It is going to go through here. And time is irrelevant. They take their time in this one. They're no longer rushing. They can stay in more control and they can make sure that these attacks are able to smoothly go through without any hiccups along the way. But the triple, let's head over the big boards. Let's go see how the rest of the wars are going. So we can see as we've reached the midpoint of the war that buff Rue Riders had a one star. Imperium Titans had a miss up there and then we have a miss there from early attacks. And outside of that, that earlier miss there from Alex Seed, and then all triples across the board outside of that. A lot of close wars still. And every single one of these wars are still up for grabs, as a single mistake there could still swing those wars back the other direction, but a little bit of lightning being used for stars. As he goes in with the Flame Flinger, we are only seeing Flame Flinger being used on attacks that have enough time for it to actually get the value. Outside of that, everybody's using the Siege Bricks or using something that can move much, much faster. But Flame Flinger is still, if you have the value for it, and the time to let it kind of coast its way through, it is the highest value Siege Machine in the game right now. And so keep it protected, let it do its thing, and if he's got all the time in the world, which he does, then he can just let it coast. But the King and the Queen making their way down towards the Town Hall. A couple of Tess is popping down there. The King is trying to get his way to the Town Hall takedown, but he's not going to get it there. He's got the wall break for the Queen. A couple of Tessas did give him a little bit of trouble there. He needs to get the Queen to take the turn into the Town Hall. Ice Gloom's freezing up. The Town Hall did activate. He will pop the Queen ability. And with the Frozen Arrow, he will lock it down. And he will also pick up the Expo as an extra bonus. Keeps on moving. Not done yet there, Queen. He's going to get her to go... Uh, almost to the air defense. Couldn't quite get there. But he will go ahead and put in the Lalo from the very top of the base there. Rogue Champion deploys with the Lalo. Headhunters down, or maybe the Rogue Champion had it on her own. Looks like there are headhunters in the mix there. Got the defensive Rogue Champion down. Remember, he zapped out the Queen on the other side of the base there. So he wants the Lalo to start at the defensive Rogue Champion and make sure that she is out of the way. But he has one more multi inferno and a multi arch tower to collapse into. He's got another hound that he deploys into the other side of the base there. There's no more air defenses to anchor Lava Hound down on. But the hound crosses in the backside there, gets some extra support. We will get all the traps pulled on it and they that'll obviously get him through with the blues he's got troops everywhere that's how you get it done stars will keep navi in the lead they just need to survive one more attack and klaus needs redemption still klaus had the miss in the previous war he got the defense today but he still has to triple to get him through this round electro dragons gotta hold strong for two more attacks as he drags go in with a little lightning, taking out the sweeper. Very, very dense core on this bay, base, but a double poison tower. This is another base with the double poison tower that maybe they would think twice against sending in Rude Riders to, 
But maybe that also means that we see defensive ice golems. We could try to take advantage of that. If Navi was consistent in their defensive strategy. But the drags need to get to the town hall here since he didn't use a blimp to go secure the town hall. But the slammers go in that direction. The town hall is activated. He's got a couple of e-drags on it. Freeze up the defensive queen. Freeze the town hall. Should get the chains off of it. And it looks like he will get it down there with the troops inside of his slammer. Got the defensive clan castle building down. And now he's not going to have the clan castle troops enter or dis or uh, leaving there. However they walk out. Uh, they will not go out and intercept his heroes and we did not see much drop out of there if anything at all so it looks like he will get the last poison tower down still moving strong rc gonna run the sinking shield and the royal gem here but gonna be stalled up by some ground skellies not out of this yet here Good should get a couple of good chains off of this archer tower and get this air defense down that's a good pickup right there Always looking for those good chains. But RC will pop her ability. That'll get the rest of the defenses down. Looks like he's got it under control. It's a triple. Qureshi will get it done for ammo shifters. They have to get through one more attack. But all of it means nothing if Klaus triples here. Klaus has the war on his shoulders. He has to make this work. Wow. Look at that war between Tribe Gaming and X-Team Early Bird. They are... 12-12, all perfect, and if you can see the times, they're exactly tied down to the second on average attack time. Unbelievable war going on over there in group one, but across the board here, a lot of wars are still in perfect territory. A couple of them fall out, but there's a one star from AG Creed as they will fall behind VM Legacy up there in group one. And I, uh, oh, oh, and a miss out of Psycho Esports at the same time. Ooh, 97% there from Spiz. A lot of wars are having some big, big swings and some drama right at the final moments here. But let's dive in and let's see what happens right here in Navi. It is time for Klaus. He's going with the single healer, all the invisibility, and a Lalo. He's got a bowler, a single bowler. Must be going for a bounce somewhere, but he can take his time. All right, Klaus. No pressure. No pressure, but this is a $30,000 event, and you do not want to mess up this attack. It is going to be a Skelly Donut. No pressure, though, right? They've handled much bigger pressure. They're, they can handle this. They're bosses over here, but... Ooh, ooh. Okay, Klaus. Klaus fails his Skelly Donut partially. Misses the Multi-Inferno there. It will be repaired. There were three battle builders around it. In fact, all five battle builders were within range of the Skelly Donut right there. He goes for the bullet bounce from left there, but a Tesla pops. He drops it in. He drops in a couple of blues to go handle the Tesla. But the Queen making her way towards the Town Hall, taking a lot of damage from the multi archer tower. And the Defensive King, she goes invisible! Barely, barely, barely saves the Queen's ability right there. That would have been a disaster, but the one healer Queen charge continues to charge forward. And the war is reliant on her getting the value she's looking for. Pops her ability. Gets to Town Hall. Got the Clan Castle troops coming his way here. A bunch of archers peeling out of there, but the Queen is relieved of damage now. He's got the multi-archer tower out of the way. And the King is able to get the Clan Castle troops at least anchored down for a moment. The Queen needs to get them completely under control here. He puts the poison down where they can be under the poison there while they fight off the King. But they need to go over there and get the Queen to finish it off here. The Super Minions is a little bit out of control right now. This is just outside of the poison with the Queen hanging on for dear life. She cannot sustain. She does go down. Slammer. Going into the super minions. Gotta get that super minion under control. It's a problem. Hitler transfers over and will go ahead and help out the world champion. She does step over and she gets it under control. Okay, he's back under control. He's got it back under control. A little bit of drama right there. But he is now needing to get the defensive world champion down on the far right side of the base there. But he already used up all of his headhunters. So he does not have extra support there. The defensive world champion is going to be a little bit of trouble here. He may have to burn a freeze into it. He's got the minions, and the pups are really just pups there attacking her right now. But he's got the hog puppet there from the world champion. She did clutch right there. She did save him. He does get the defensive world champion down with the minions and pups. He lost a couple blues in the process, but that is perfectly fine. Swags a freeze on the back end of the base, and Klaus delivers. Navi's got the perfect war. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your redemption arc there.
in Klaus's path through this World Championship warm-up. He gets the defense. He gets the win for his team on multiple fronts there. So now as Navi celebrates, we have one more attack from MO Shifters as we see Frosty deliver the final blow. Then we'll check the scoreboards here. We'll check the standings and we'll see where we sit after round four of six for our World Championship warm-up group stages. But guys, there's only two wars left here. They need to make sure they are in the top half. And Navi has positioned themselves very, very well to be in a good spot on the top half of the group. And I think that they're probably going to make it. I would say that they need like maybe one more win to guarantee they make it through the group stages here and make it into the playoffs where they will go into a double elimination bracket. Eight teams will go in and then we will see who ends up winning the World Championship warm-up title and, of course, the lion's share of a $30,000 prize. But Frosty just able to get his heroes to dive in and get the Eagle Artillery out of the way. Getting out the Inferno right there. Nice extra bonus. Gets the Clan Castle pulled. Now we can get the Clan Castle pulled off to somewhere else and fight it if it needs to be fought off. Looks like it's Ice Golems and Rocket Balloons. So he'll just go ahead and set the next phase here. He got the Headhunters that'll go into the King. I don't like where those Headhunters are going. It would have been nice to have them go to the World Champion instead. They'll get the King down. But they're going to die before they get to the World Champion. That means the World Champion of the Queen still standing. Almost every time we see Lalo having high success, we have... The heroes dive in to either get the defensive queen or the defensive world champion, or we use lightning or something to get those out. But he's got a skeleton spell and freeze on the defensive queen over the side. His world champion on defense is still standing, and she's giving him trouble right now. He had a skeleton spell to freeze over there as well, but his world champion is on her way in right now. Almost got the defensive queen under control. Still standing over there, though. Can we get that down? Okay, got her. Okay, okay. We got to get back to the world champion, though. Looks like the... Offensive road champion was able to handle the defensive road champion. He goes invisible with her and with the haste file He will power on through so it is low level equipment here. Not gonna be a problem. He lost all of his balloons But he's gonna power through in the end. We do see the life gem We see the frozen arrow and we see that giant gauntlet right there, but guys, it's a triple here but because Klaus got the defense and eliminated time out of the equation. It did change the landscape of the war here significantly, but they never were able to find the defense that they needed. Navi takes the win. Now let's go see who is going to be joining them in that win. Okay, okay, it looks like our times are in between Tribe Gaming and X-Team. Early bird, and look at that! X-Team able to get the tiebreaker time, and it is going to go to them. Tribe Gaming loses in group one. VM Legacy takes the win my goodness my goodness look <laughs> x team x team moving fast on that one with vm legacy taking the win tribe and vm legacy are now tied and x team is right behind them that group is contended we have group two where psycho esports took the loss Agnestars took the win so Agnestars moves up and jero jero clan and psycho esports are now tied in second place that also remains very, very tight. However, in group three, Stalwart Esports continues to dominate. We see early attacks, however, taking the loss there against Synchronic, and that actually ties them both up there. They are now both two and two. However, we look down into group four, and Navi ends up moving into a decisive lead, but they are not in the clear yet. If they don't win at least one of the next two, then they still could end up losing their spot. So we'll keep a close eye. But guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and join us again in tomorrow's video for the next one.